The Russian army is running out of light armored vehicles. It has reached a plateau in terms of ammunition, and today the number of shells is much smaller than two years ago at the beginning of the full scale invasion. The enemy is increasing the production of drones and trying to carry out more massive strikes on infrastructure facilities in Ukraine, but it does not have an infinite number of tanks and motivated manpower, so it is quite possible to predict that the Russian army will exhaust its offensive potential in the fall. This opinion was expressed by Maximilian Andronikov, deputy commander of the Freedom of Russia Legion, Caesar, in an interview with Vasily Golovanov on the YouTube channel Fabrika Novosti. But it is not only the exhaustion of technical capabilities that will dampen the ardor of the Russian occupiers, the warring oppositionists added. There is another important factor. The mood among Russian citizens is becoming increasingly anti-war. People are beginning to understand that the adventure that Putin has started is not at all needed by the people of the Russian Federation. He said, look, in two weeks, there have been four dam breaks in Russia. Putin keeps talking about some kind of breakthrough. He probably means a scientific and technical breakthrough. But so far, only dams that are not very complex hydraulic structures are bursting. But he can't even maintain them in normal working order, Andronikov noted. He also answered the question of what the Legion would do if military actions froze. According to him, the Legionnaires, as volunteers, could very well go home and begin on their native land those actions that they consider necessary. But as a citizen of the Russian Federation, a Russian person and a Christian, I will not lay down my arms as long as Putin and his clique exist. Because if Putin personally dies, the system will remain the same. I will fight against it with all available forces and means. Military, political, ideological. And many of my legionnaire brothers are ready to follow my example, said the leader of Freedom of Russia. In the Houthi-held Hodeida region, Governor Mohammed Kahim told the rebels Almasira TV that 30 people died and 5 were missing in the floods, adding that more than 500 people had been displaced. He added that a number of homes were destroyed and more than seven cars were swept away. Hodeida, the southwestern city of Taiz, and the northwestern city of Haja were all hit hard by floods this week during Yemen's ongoing seasonal rainfall that caused flooding that swept away poorly built homes. UN humanitarian agency OCHA said the flooding in Taiz had affected 10,000 people and resulted in 80 wells being buried, farmlands being washed away and homes damaged, citing access difficulties and a shortage of funding for aid agencies. Local authorities still haven't reached areas severely affected by the floods for two days, leaving some residents trapped inside their homes, according to witnesses who spoke with the Associated Press. Mahdi al Mashid, chairman of the Supreme Political Council, ordered local authorities to respond to damaged areas, according to Masira TV, which reported that floods caused major damages to properties, lands, and roads, in Hodeida. Witnesses described the scene in the Yemeni Tehama coastal plain as horrifying. Mohammed Rassam said some livestock were found dead after drowning in the mud due to the floods. Food supplies and drinkable water were also lost. The flood swept away everything, he said. Some residents were stranded inside their homes in Tehama, a region that is part of Hodeida. Others were able to leave and headed to Hodeida city. Many of the houses in Tehama, where malnutrition has been reported, are made of brick and materials that can be easily ruined by rain. I'm good. Yeah, that was. 